What's up, Acolyte Squad? My name is Prince, and I'm an urban acolyte. I'm coming to you guys off the dome to talk about whatever this drama is. There's always drama when it comes to Star Wars, it seems, regarding uh, the Rebels uh, sequel uh, that might not be happening in the Ahsoka Tano spinoff. I don't know. There's an article about it after I saw people kind of talking about it on Twitter uh, early this morning for me. So I'm going to... Uh, dive into everything real quick just want to shout out everyone who has uh submitted an application for the 12 week superhero test group uh, i'm going to be contacting the people who have responded um in the morning for me it'll be tonight for you guys so be checking your your inboxes uh, for a response and uh for those of you who are still interested there's still time to get in on the test group all right but this article uh I saw it on Screen Rant this afternoon about the Soka Tano uh, show rumors and uh, teasing a potential Star Wars Rebels sequel. So um, what I gathered from this is that uh, first off, this information is coming from uh, uh, Kessel Run Transmission, which I believe is what Noah and Corey do. And basically what I feel like they whatever i i didn't go in and click on the channel or anything the because they got the link here to their uh, youtube channel um but uh, these guys have been you know reporting different inside source information rumors just like a number of other people and i kind of i i kind of lost my taste for uh their channel their podcast whatever it is they do i guess they do both um, after they threw their, their huge temper tantrum heading into the Mandalorian season two, season two, uh, because they didn't put Ahsoka Tano on any of the uh, the marketing. Right. They kept talking about right, like they were just as bad as Grace Randolph, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing they didn't report that Grace Randolph reported and was wrong about was the whole Pedro Pascal storming off the set and quitting the Mandalorian and that we would have half the season dealing with the other characters uh, who would have their spinoffs. And the whole reason was because Pedro Pascal allegedly quit the Mandalorian, which, uh, you know, we saw that didn't happen. Look, if if people want to call a Sokotano series a spinoff, a rebel uh, sequel, that's fine. But to me, it's whose name is on it it's not star wars rebels part two it's not star wars rebels continued it's ahsoka tano and this what what they this this paragraph here i, I just need to read it because i said when i saw it it made me it kind of shot it to me i don't think these guys understand the story and what they're talking about so listen to this it says according to the youtube channel kessel run transmission the driving plot of the series revolves around Ahsoka's search for Grand Admiral Thrawn, one of the primary villains of Star Wars Rebels, and thusly her search for Ezra Bridger, who was last seen aboard Thrawn's Star Destroyer in the series' last episode. This isn't entirely surprising considering the end of Star Wars Rebels saw Ahsoka teaming with Sabine Wren to track down Ezra, while Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian featured Ahsoka battling Morgan Elspeth and demanding knowledge on the whereabouts of Thrawn. What's new, however, is that Filoni and Favreau are said to be using existing scripts for the proposed animated Rebel sequel. Right. So this is where people are pitching the fit because uh, uh, allegedly stuff that they were going to use in the rebel sequel the animated possibly animated thing is now being given to rosario dawson's live action ahsoka tano show we don't know what that is it could have been they that first off those those scripts could have dealt with ahsoka a solo show maybe it picks up this is ahsoka in the search for thrawn but before we see her, like you see in the picture, Ahsoka the Grey, before she becomes Ahsoka the White, the transition, right? Now, I, I said this in another video. Shout out to my main man, uh, Niger. Man, I'm messing up Niger's name, and this is somebody I know in real life. <laughs> Niger Woodruff picked up on this because he's a mystic like me, right? I said that Ahsoka Tano, Ahsoka the White, you know, this is Ahsoka still Jedi, but not Jedi, right? But then she becomes Ahsoka the White 
force mystic, right? Whatever her relation is to Mortis and Morai and the daughter of Mortis, right? I talked about this in the last Ahsoka Tano video I posted. What was it? A day, two days ago? It was yesterday for me, but I don't know what day or time it went up for you guys in the U.S. And, um, you know, and this video will go up tomorrow for me, but this afternoon for you guys. So I don't know. Time is weird. When I start talking about when I posted a video, y'all are just going to have to understand it's on my time, which is different from you guys, unless you're here in uh, in uh, Asia, in this part of the world. Um, or uh, those of you in the land down under, like Amanda Chidiak, you was actually ahead of me. Right. So she's probably in bed now. But uh, anyway, uh, like. What's his name? I don't know the guy, whoever runs Dash's Dash's channel now. And um, there was somebody who commented. I don't know if it was on Instagram or in YouTube comments or where. And they were like, Dash is always wrong now. And he's, he's, he's gone or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know if Dash sold his channel or there's a video where he explains what's happening. I I played it in the background months ago. It feels like a year ago now, but it wasn't that long ago. Uh, it might have been seven or eight months ago. Um, and he explained that he was handing the channel off to somebody else. And I don't know their relationship, but, you know, it's like if Dash is still getting the money, then he probably doesn't he probably doesn't care what the dude is saying because it's not technically not his name on the channel anymore it's lore star and not dash star right but he talked about you know like uh this whole mortis thing and or something you see the mortis kind of or the world between worlds is what he said the world between worlds stuff on the sokotano series like on the poster and i said nah, i think it could be the world between worlds but the world between worlds has a close connection to mortis and i think that this series is going to deal more with ahsoka yes she'll obviously be searching for thrawn but if Dave Filoni is involved, it, it could have had anybody come and do that. But specifically because it's Dave Filoni, it's going to deal with her transition from Ahsoka the Gray to Ahsoka the White. It's going to deal with uh, Ahsoka. Who knows? Ahsoka may become some kind of avatar for the daughter. Maybe the Mortis gods are, are you know, go through this cycle of rebirth. We don't know. Like Anakin destroyed them and. Uh, somehow they they come back. Uh, maybe that's a possibility that could set up something for, you know, post uh, the rise of Skywalker and maybe Ahsoka becomes involved. Right. Uh, for all we know, Ahsoka could could have like uh, extended her lifespan the same way that Revan was able to live for what, three, four hundred years because of um, his connection with. Uh, vitiate or tenebrate uh, was it tenebr uh, what is what is vitiate's like his real name i think it's tenebris the the immortal emperor and uh there's a little like line in alphabet squadron that the immortal emperor who i'm assuming to be vitiate might actually be canon there's a line that says rumors of the immortal emperor um and i'm just saying that because maybe ahsoka through you know the daughter giving up sacrificing herself to uh save ahsoka when she actually did die um or was you know at death's door in the clone wars in that episode you know those episodes on mortis that arc uh we don't know how that could have changed ahsoka affected her impacted her because like i said it's kind of implied that in the rise of Skywalker, she's still alive somewhere out there. Right. Uh, the, one of the voices that spoke with Ray was said to be, to, to, to still be connected, you know, to the living in a way that Ray didn't understand. And I'm assuming that's Ahsoka. Right. So, I mean, this, this goes on and, and, and it, you know, talks about, Oh, it goes on to say the good news is the viewers may be getting a Star Wars Rebels sequel of sorts. But the bad news, at least for some fans, is that if these rumors are correct, the sequel will be the live action Ahsoka series and not an animated sequel. Sabine Wren is also rumored to be introduced as a partner for Ahsoka with a show including live action versions of Ezra and Thrawn. 
who were said to be getting their own theories as well. Of course, nothing is confirmed at this point, so it's best to take these rumors with a grain of salt. And when I read that and seeing people talk about there was uh, the big sister, Trisha Barr. I don't know if she was alluding to this article or talking about something else, someone else. But she she said something about like, uh, don't believe things you hear from an unreliable source. So I'm, I'm probably misquoting her, but it was it sounded like it was something along those lines. And like I. I really try not to get into the drama and stuff because like, um, you know, um, my friend Sandra, who's actually the media, the social media person for the, um, the Fangirls Going Rogue podcast, which, you know, Trisha Barr is uh, one of the three hosts of that uh, podcast. Like she was talking about a Star Wars fan walk away and like I'm me being on the other side of the world and Twitter your Twitter feed is not in chronological order. So I, I see the tail end of stuff. I see stuff out of order. And when people are like, well, what are you talking about, Prince? I don't see it. Well, you're not checking Twitter. First off, you might not be following the same people I'm following or the topics I'm following for the people who say that kind of stuff. And then, you know, if you're in the U.S., you're seeing stuff, you know, as it unfolds as it develops in the U.S., but me being on the other side of the world, I see the end of it, and then I see bits and pieces, and I see the puzzle with all the pieces scattered, and then I spend more time than I should trying to piece them back together, and I'm thinking that maybe it's this, right, that first off, it wasn't a confirmed rumor that there will be a Rebels uh, sequel, that it's going to be an animated thing, and to be honest, I mean, I don't know who needs to hear this, but if Ezra's all grown up and Sabine is all grown up, then it doesn't make sense for it to be a Rebels sequel, like an animated thing. Um, like I said, I think that the Ahsoka Tano series is going to start with Ahsoka the Grey, right? And go to, uh, you know what, I've been po using my mouse to point to these and y'all can't even see it because I have this set up for my screen set up for gaming where you don't see my mouse moving. Right. So, <laughs> so Ahsoka the gray to Ahsoka the white. Right. I think this is really going to focus more on that transition and then her searching for Thrawn and where it ends, where the Ahsoka, if this is a limited series thing, it's going to end with Ahsoka returning to Lothal to get Sabine. And I got a lead on Thrawn. I got a lead on Ezra. But at the same time, she's obviously gone through this, this, uh, this, this spiritual, this spiritual journey, right? Going from the gray to the white, going from the Jedi to the mystic, the force mystic, whatever is in the next line of Ahsoka's evolution. Why? Because there's a new Jedi that will come in the end of the story, and that would be Ezra. And like I said, they're not kids anymore. These animated shows, it's like, what did I say? Go, those of y'all who've been here to OG, well, you don't even have to be an OG. But what was my big complaint about season, the final season of Rebels is that up until the very end, you always had Ezra doing some goofy ass shit. Now, I didn't mean to cuss because that, that just lowered the CPM on this video. But I had to say it, right? Ezra's always being goofy up until the finale, like the final, you know, up until Kanan's death, right? I think that's when he stopped doing goofy stuff. Then it was like, okay, this is serious. Like, I got to get the Empire off Lothal. But up till then, like even when, uh, what was Thrawn's little assassin dude, Ruch, Right. It did, didn't he didn't Ezra do something goofy in that episode, too? Like I can't remember exactly, but I think he did. Yeah, you guys get my point. Right. Because that's that's the it's a kid's show. Right now, you know, like Freddie Prince Jr. said, Star Wars is always going to be for kids. But, you know, the Mandalorian, what what was Kitty about that? Be Jeezy, Baby Grogu, Baby Yoda. That was for kids. But the rest of it, it was pretty serious. And I'm wondering 
season three of the Mandalorian in the book of Boba Fett, they're going, they got some big, some big shoes to fill because uh, the book of Boba Fett, the draw is, is Boba Fett, right? He looked cool when we saw him. What is he doing? Fennec Shan, right? They're selling us on Fennec Shan, putting her in the Bad Batch, um, you know, series and, and Ming-Na Wen is voicing her there and then playing her live action. That's awesome, right? Maybe the kids watch the Bad Batch. I don't really know. I, that, I think that could be kind of mature, but it's animated, so it might be a little bit goofy too. They'll have some, you know, got to understand uh, Star Wars love the kids, right? Drop the top and let the sunshine in. <laughs> Grab the draw in the wind. <laughs> oh, man. I bet 90% of y'all don't even didn't even catch that reference, right? Where my hip hop heads at. And for those of y'all who didn't, I'll clue you in. After you finish watching the video, Google um, Trick Daddy and CeeLo Green draw in the wind. So anyway, getting back. So, uh, you know, they love the kids, but I don't know what the draw is for the kids in the Boba Fett series. Like he's there on Tatooine. He blew away. You know, Jabba's goons and 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 he set up shop, you know, in, in Jabba's place. He, he he's in Jabba's house now, right? With his with his feet on the counter, right? His feet on the tables. He's like, I I run this now, right? I'm I'm Rick James and this is Eddie Murphy's couch, right? Except I shot Eddie and Charlie and ain't nobody gonna stop me from stomping all over this couch with with all the sand and stuff on my boots, right? So there's that. So I'm thinking this Boba Fett show is kind of more for the people who were kids who love Boba Fett and now they're adults and they want to see Boba Fett do what he do. Right. Or just people who are into the story and love it. Right. Mandalorian season three. We're we're talking about, you know, Din Jaren's got the dark saber. They're possibly going to Mandalore to fight to oust whoever's there. Moff Gideon is still, he's still, you know, at play, even though he was arrested and taken into custody, you know, he's not going, he's not going out like no punk, right? So there's whatever the empire is doing and however they retaliate, right? Every season has, has ended with the good guys on top and maybe season three takes a turn for the dark, right? We got to have something to set up season four, right? They, they escape, you know, if it's like, Rebels was, you know, Rebels, they what happened in season three in the finale, Thrawn and, and, and the Empire came to Adelin. And if it hadn't been for, you know, some insubordination, right, Phoenix Squadron would have gotten wiped out. But they, they managed to escape uh, with, you know, with the help of uh, some some people not wanting to listen to Thrawn, some some racism kind of right. Some. We we had some proud boys in the empire that were too proud to listen to Thrawn, and then uh, they got a last minute. Uh, they got some last minute help from uh, from your boy that some of y'all are always talking about, uh, Bindu. I'm the one in the middle. I am Bindu, right? Bindu helped them out. Um, but it was it, it was kind of dark. Like they they kind of took an L, but they escaped and made it to Yavin Four, right? Maybe that's how the Mandalorian goes and where I'm where I'm driving with all of this, what I'm it's taken me way too long to make this point is that uh, these live action shows aren't really for kids. They have some elements, some things to draw them in. But where they go in now is not really for kids. And so I don't feel like Rebels is going to get a sequel. Right. Th this isn't Ahsoka, the Rebel sequel. No, this is Ahsoka Tano and her, yes, her, the draw, the, the, the reason for why she's out there is to look for Thrawn. But in the process, right, she's going to transition from Ahsoka the Grey, Ahsoka the Samurai to Ahsoka the Mystic, Ahsoka the White. So I'm trying to tell you, that's not a rebel sequel. That is just the evolution of Ahsoka Tano. Right. And she's part of that timeline that doesn't make it a rebel sequel. It's just like I, I don't understand why these people who cover Star Wars and, and, you know, maybe 
their audience doesn't understand it either. And so they like the way they present it. And that's why I'm not in their audience. And that's something people need to understand, right? Is that everybody has an audience. Everybody talks about Star Wars the way they talk about it. And people who don't talk have the conversations that I want to hear, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to watch them. And so if I say, yeah, I don't watch these guys, just not me hating. It's just, you know, people don't want to listen to me. And I'm OK with that. Right. I, I don't I don't want them to be here, you know, leaving all kind of crazy comments stuff. because then I got to deal with it if I decide to engage that. Right. People like what they like. People like don't like what they don't like. Some people don't know if they, if they like it or not, not like it. And some people don't know why. Right. But for me, I'm just like, are we getting more of the story? I don't care about a rebel sequel. It's the the rebel sequel is just more. The rebel sequel is just more of them telling this story, allowing it to unfold. It doesn't matter if you call it Rebels Part Two, uh, the journey of Ezra Bridger, right? Thrawn and the Chiss Ascendancy. No matter what you call it, right? It's it's the natural progression of the story. As far as I'm concerned, right? The natural progression of the story is. Thrawn is returned to the Chiss Ascendancy and he's convinced Ezra that, you know, we need to squash this beef. I'm not really I'm not really like that with the Empire and everybody on my ship is loyal to me, not to Palpatine. Right. We they've been through the trenches. They know what I'm about. They, they've even gone and assisted with the Ascendancy. And now that, you know, now that there's no Empire. Right. In it in it. Palpatine used me to get to Exegol, and that was the, my only purpose in the story. Now I need to focus on the civil war within the Chiss Ascendancy and the Grisk. Did you catch that? The civil war within the Chiss Ascendancy and the Grisk. You have some of the high houses in the Chiss Ascendancy that want to join the Grisk. Then you have the Grisk fighting the Chiss Ascendancy and then you have the P, the Chiss Ascendancy who's fighting the other houses and the Grisk. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with, right? And then we who knows whatever else is out there in the unknown regions that could connect to the High Republic because I feel like I, I truly believe that something happened. And, I, and please don't spoil it. I haven't read the books yet. I'm, uh, I'm halfway through what is the Light of the Jedi and then I got a, I think there's like the young adult or teenage kids book or whatever. Uh, and then the, the comic book that came out. Right. So I'm getting through it in due time. I'm halfway through, you know, they, they the Nile have shown up and I do want to start making videos on the High Republic. I'm just trying to figure out how to enter, how to introduce the High Republic stuff on the channel, like where to start. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You know what? I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys. You guys who are interested in the High Republic, if you've already read everything, like don't say any because I haven't read anything. I don't. I don't want to spoil it for everybody else. Let me uh, go back to the face camera because I'm getting ready in this. Right, this is way too long. Video's way too long. I want it to be under 20 minutes, but it is what it is. I had a lot to say. Um. But um, I'm, you know, so if you're interested in it, give me some ideas in the comments for for videos that you'd like to see in the High Republic. I'm completely open this up to you guys. And if it's something crazy like Prince, I want you to talk about the Jedi fighting styles. And no, I mean, stuff that's actually in the story, uh, themes, topics, whatever uh, discussions that we can have. And uh, I'll try to make those scripted videos. I know. Some of y'all like off the dome, but off the dome videos go too long. And, uh, you know, they're great for the core audience, but they're not great for growing the channel. Right. Um, but anyway, this Ahsoka thing, like I said, I think it will set up what we would call a Rebels sequel. That's not what I feel like it's going to be, right? We we already know that there's a, a a gap between when Rebels ends and when we see Ahsoka in the Mandalorian and when she reconnects with Sabine. 
that could set up another show. Will it be animated? It might be, but you know what? I would prefer them to do it live action, make it a mini movie. You know, uh, this is going to deal with uh, more serious stuff. It, it's not really a kid's thing. Ron, you know, the, could they do more with the animated? If it were animated, maybe. I don't know. With the the, the tech that they're using, those those uh those LED screens and how they're making these shows now, I don't know. Like Jason Ward was talking about back you know, two years ago, three years ago, when they were first filming season one, he was like, they have ways where they can render all the CGI right there where, you know, right there on the set, you know, and they can, they can uh, do all the stuff that took, you know, a lot hours in post production. They can do half that while they're right there filming it, like right there. So who knows what they're able to do, you know, now, um, but my big thing is, you know, if you have it animated, to me, that says kids. I know anime doesn't, isn't for kids, for the anime people, cartoon people who like cartoons and animation stuff. Yeah, I understand that. You know, obviously stuff like hente is not for kids. But when it comes to Star Wars, every animated thing we've seen has kind of had like this, except for Clone Wars Season 7, which I haven't, I admit, I haven't seen all of it. But it was pretty, but it's war, right? At some point, it's like, you know, when it started out, hey, fry guy, hey, sky guy, right? Come on, snips. You know, like, it was kind of kitty. It was kind of goofy, and people didn't like it. And then as it got more serious, and the, the and you got actual connected arcs, and not these kind of one-off adventures, the way season one started out, season two started introducing real arcs, now that we see kind of the players and we got to feel a lay of the land and understand what's going on. Start getting darker, start getting more serious. And I just kind of feel like, you know, you, if you really want to tell the story the way people want to see it and not have those little goofy moments and stuff, you can have comedy, Right. But you I mean, you just had Ezra doing just straight goofy stuff that would just completely take me out. And I liked Rebels like I liked Rebels from the minute I saw it when, you know, Emergency Awesome Charlie was like he, he reviewed like the first three episodes and he was like, yep, nope, I'm out. It's boring. I don't like it. Right. And I kept I just stuck with it. And uh, I wasn't doing this. I wished I had because, you know, y'all would have been like he was right. You know, only my personal friends know this because they because I posted it on my on my wall. I was like the minute Ahsoka came down that ladder at in the season one finale, I was like, everybody's going to be watching Rebels season two. Right. I remember I was playing Swole Tour with some friends from City of Heroes and they were like, no, man, that Rebels show sucks. I'm not watching that. And then when see when Rebels wrapped up, they were all man, this is the greatest show and da ba da and it's so awesome and oh man, I'm sad that it's over. And I was like, Yeah. But 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 when it started, you you kept telling me it sucked and it was like, No nah, man, I'ma stop playing Swell Tour so I can go watch Rebels and y'all like, What are you watching that for? Right? I mean, now look, I mean we're talking about a rebel sequel, you know, for a show people hated when it well, I won't say I hate it, but they didn't want to watch it when it first came out, season one. Right? So it is what it is, man. That's that's the Star Wars fans. They're always fickle as hell. You know, it is what it is. Like I said, just watch it, get the story, and draw your conclusions from there. You know, you can. There's always gonna be stuff. I would prefer to see this. I would. I don't really want to see that. I would like the story to go in this direction. That's okay, right? You 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 say what you what you think, how you feel, and then you move on, right? What's bad is when you throw temper tantrums from for weeks and months and years, you know, over not getting what you what you wanted. I said I don't think Luke is going to train Grogu. I don't think Luke has a place in the story. Uh, I was wrong. Luke showed up. And, you know, what did I, how did I start that out? I think, I think I'm not the one writing it. I'm not directing it. I'm not producing it. 
my name ain't nowhere on the credits, right? I think this because I'd like to see some other Jedi who survived the purge and we get the story on what they've been doing and that could open up something that we don't know already. But it was Luke and there's still stuff we don't know about Luke. What was he doing in between the time that, uh, you know, he stopped training Leia and he started training, you know, Ben besides the stuff in the Legends of Luke Skywalker that, you know, was really only a few stories. Obviously, he wasn't there on the planet, you know, watching the ocean for five years before he got to Hodge Toe and watched the ocean for five years. <laughs> That's what prepared him, right? He wasn't stuck inside that little, that animal, whatever that big worm was or whatever. It's kind of space slug where uh, those, uh, those other force mystics were who, you know, predated the Jedi Order. And, you know, they gave up their lives. They came out of stasis to, uh, to save Luke and uh, the other, I think it was a lady he was trapped in there with so that they could live, right? It was like, you know, we're, we're going to sacrifice. We, we've had our time. Now it's your time. It's your turn to lead the force into the future, right? And we've had our time. Maybe, maybe we have been here for thousands of years just for this moment, right? To save you. And that's, and, and and Luke had to question that, that, you know, what's so important that all these people have sacrificed themselves for my sake, right? And then he had to relearn that lesson when he, you know, gave himself over to the force to save Ray and Leia, right? So that Leia could train, finish Ray's training and save her son, right? Because... She said her uh, her path as a Jedi ended with her son's death, and that's what happened. She died. Her son died. And then Ray brought him back, and then, then he died again. Right? So anyway, that's a, that's a bit of a eulogy. <laughs> and that's a good time to end this video because it really didn't need to be this long. But uh, is what it is. Um, so that's my TED Talk. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and uh, may the force of others be with you always.